Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation about ultra strong, lightweight, nano architected materials. Light yet strong. This is pretty much the holy grail of material science since long times. Now, in the Stone Age, that idea may already have existed as well. However, as you can see in that strength density chart over here, the uh, material range available to the Stone Age engineers was with stone and wood still quite limited these days. And also, gold is the only known metal was rather an expensive choice. Now, in the course of history, the situation changed dramatically. Um, lots of new groups of materials evolved, and the accessible range, both for the strength and the density, uh, kept on growing constantly. And nowadays, we got a broad range of materials, uh, ranging from foams and woods over polymers, composites, to ceramics and metals. However, as we can see here, those materials which are strong, they're at the same time usually quite heavy. And those which are generally light are pretty weak at the same time. And as you can see, this is pretty much it. So we got those two extremes and a field of combinations of them in between. There is not really a lot which is heavy and weak, although that may not really be of particular interest, right? Uh, but in, on, the, on the other hand, there is also nothing which is light and at the same time strong, which is what we all want to have for sure, which uh, would be great for lots of applications in aerospace, aviation, automobility, and so on, which would revolutionize uh, pretty much everything which is moving or needs to be carried. So we've been thinking a couple of years ago, if there is a opportunity to engineer uh, materials which are indeed light, yet at the same time strong? And the answer is yes. Now let me show you how our solution works. First of all, why are those light materials here on the left so much weaker um, than the heavy ones? Pretty much everything uh, on the left of the red line, which is the density of liquid water are porous materials. That means there is not really a solid material which is uh, a lot lighter than liquid water. Now, the problem of such cellular materials, uh, such as that aluminum foam over there, is their random architecture. So their mechanical behavior is determined by bending of all those little cell walls and struts, which is disadvantages for achieving high strength. On the other hand, a specific architecture is way more efficient. In this thigh bone, which you can see here, all the little struts here are aligned with the actin principal stress directions, which you can see here. That means uh, along those directions, there is no bending, so it's a stretching-dominated architecture, which is actually good. Now, let me emphasize again the impact of architecture with that piece of paper. So what I'm doing right now, I created a kind of random structure similar to that of that piece of aluminum foam we, which you've just seen. And as you all know, this, this is not really strong, right? Out of the same piece of paper, I could have also created something like this, which is a honeycomb structure. And I will show you right now that this single piece of paper is actually strong enough to carry me, hopefully. Here we go. One piece of paper, 200 kilos. All right, so we need a uh, optimized architecture to increase the strength of cellular materials. And that bone over here has not only an optimized architecture, but is also structured hierarchically. And the lowest level of hierarchy, which you can see here, actually consists of nanometer thin ceramic-like platelets. Um, and by this nanostructuring, a mechanical size effect in the uh, fracture strength can be exploited. The fracture strength um, of brittle materials such as ceramics 
usually scales with the size of floors which those materials contain. The smaller the floors, the higher the strength. Now the floors themselves, they scale with the overall dimensions of an object. So that means for that plate over here, when we make it thinner and thinner in the nanometer scale, the strength increases rapidly and eventually reaches the theoretical strength below a certain critical thickness, which is assumed to be in the range of a few nanometers. So, to create strong yet light materials, we need to take advantage of those mechanical size effects and we need an optimized architecture. And a way to do that is by nano lattice materials, which you can see here in the back. So what we got here is a stretching dominated optimized microarchitecture um, with single struts which are only one to two microns in diameter. That means here we can apply walls which are just a few nanometer thin, which makes them ultra strong because of the small scale. However, by a periodic arrangement of such lattice cells, we could create much larger structures with that size effect being preserved. We manufacture such nano lattices by means of 3D direct laser writing. That is a um, two photon lithography process, which is capable to create three dimensional structures with a sub micrometer resolution. Um, therefore, a pulsed laser beam is focused on a sample holder with a liquid photoresist on it, which is UV sensitive by an optical microscope, as illustrated here. Now, at the very focal spot uh, of the laser light, the uh, photoresist polymerizes, means solidifies. Now, by moving the sample stage around, and by scanning that laser beam, we can actually build three-dimensional nanostructures. Now, to take advantage of that uh, mechanical size effect, which I mentioned, we need to apply techniques such as atomic layer deposition, which is illustrated here, uh, to create ceramic or composite structures, because uh, out of the printing process, we have a polymeric structure only. So with that method, we created uh, different types of architecture. Uh, here in the top row, you can see the entire structures. And in the lower row, it's a close-up view of the single unit cells, respectively. And all those designs have been optimized under different boundary conditions. Now, we tested those structures mechanically, as you can see here. Um, so this is an experiment which has been carried out inside of a scanning electron microscope. And as you can see here, uh, immediately, is that once a thin layer of aluminum of just 10 nanometers is applied, the strength and the stiffness of that lattice increases dramatically. So here, we again got um, the still frames in the moment of fracture. So I think you already got it. It's all, all about size, as always in life, right? But in that case, it's the other way around. This is a micrograph of a human hair. And now here we can see how small our structures are compared to that. Now, if we further increase the resolution or decrease the size of structuring, we managed to actually increase the strength again. So making it even smaller makes it even better. But this is still not the end. We found a way to increase the resolution by another 500%. And by this, a tremendous strength gain emerged of up to 400%. Now the unit cells of that very small lattice over here, they're not even one micrometer in size. And this is more than 60 times as the diameter of that hair in the back. Now, back in our strength density chart from the beginning, you can really see that all those differently scaled lattices achieve unique ratios of strength to weight. Um, 
you can see here, they attain outstanding uh, values which are even close to that mark theoretical limit, which makes them indeed light yet strong at the same time. Now, let me give you an idea on what we could use those materials for in the maybe next five to 10 years. So one could think of uh, several microscale multifunctional applications, such as in microfluidics, we could use them for injection systems, similar to what has been printed by the NASA a couple of years ago, or for high-strength nanofilter components, or maybe electronical devices. Or we could apply them for thermal management, um, such as insulation or active cooling, which is already done on a little bit larger scale. But obviously, the most interesting application would be real lightweight structures, macroscopic structures for aerospace, aviation, automobility, sports, and medicine, as I already mentioned. However, this is uh, what brings me to the big challenge which we're facing, and this is the scalability. So even though, in the meantime, we can fabricate structures which are that large that some headless people might even stumble over them, as you can see here, we're still far away from macroscopic lightweight structures. In fact, that poor lady here, which uh, friends of mine created within an art project, is not even as tall as the eye of that needle. So again, the big challenge we're, which we're facing is, how can we scale up the process? How can we create larger structures in a very far future, maybe even components for an airplane, when at the moment the size of material which we can produce is in the range of just a couple of cubic millimeters. Thank you very much.